I'm Matt Bichard with NARI, and in conjunction with Breet Week 2020, I'm joined today by Pierre Rigaud, Vice President of Advisory and Consulting with Green Street Advisors. Pierre, I'd like to start by talking about the impacts of COVID-19 and how they're being felt throughout the global capital markets. Public REIT investors in particular are growing concerned over the potential long-term consequences that sheltering in place and general economic slowdown will have on the commercial real estate market. Can you comment on how public REIT investors have reacted to this pandemic? And more specifically, whether this growing concern is shared across the different real estate sectors? Well, absolutely. Well, uh, first and foremost, COVID is affecting businesses' ability to pay rent. And so what we've seen since the end of uh, February, really, is the REIT uh, market being down roughly 30%. S&P 500, in the meantime, down roughly 15%. Now, there are wide uh, implications by property sectors. Malls, lodging, um, healthcare down 40 to 50% on average. Apartment office down roughly 30%. Industrial and self-storage not impacted that much. Towers, data centers actually up during the same time period. Now, the ultimate uh, impact on property value uh, in the long term should really uh, be limited to short-term disruptions um, if, there's, if there's not going to be any long-term change in behavior. And for example, a property losing all of its cash flow for one year, for 12 months, should technically have an impact to its value uh, of, of about 5 to 6%. And so at Green Street, we've analyzed and qualified short-term uh, disruptions in cash flow and potential long-term changes in behavior. And really, one um, sector is standing out to us, uh, it defies any explanation that we have right now, and that's apartments. Uh, apartment uh, sector is done significantly, and we don't really foresee any long-term negative prospects in that sector. Um, and the, the sharp decline cannot be explained um, by short-term disruption in cash flow alone. While investors have a similar consensus on the short-term impacts and disruptions related to the pandemic, there's still plenty of speculation regarding the long-term implications of COVID-19. Which sectors, in your opinion, do you think are going to emerge as long-term winners as well as losers in a post-COVID-19 world? Well, uh, it's a good question. I agree with you. We are uh, for sure going to see some long-term behavioral changes in, in some property sectors. And here, really, we see two buckets. One, uh, industrial and retail. Now, we're all familiar with that disruption. It's been going on for, for a number of years already. The uh, increase in online retail demand has been a headwind for physical stores, and it's been a tailwind for industrial space. And really, what we've seen during this pandemic is an acceleration of that trend. What it means for industrial, better short-term and long-term growth prospects. What it means for retail, well, what we thought could take 10 years, for example, the demise of uh, lower quality malls could actually be compressed and take only a few years. So that's retail and industrial. The other bucket is office, lodging, and the communication reads. Now here, the adoption of potentially work from home policies, online meetings, online education, and so forth, could be a headwind for office and lodging. Businesses may not use these two property sectors as much as they used to be. Uh, that is a tailwind for the communication reads, towers, and data centers. Online activity is likely to ramp up in the next uh, few years and, and, and in the future, and businesses are likely going to shift more of their business online. Um, that trend, though, is up for debate. It remains to be seen the type of uh, policies that companies will be able uh, to implement in the, in the near term as far as work from home and moving some of their businesses online. And finally, Pierre, public REITs typically exhibit more conservative balance sheets relative to the private real estate sector. Are certain REIT sectors more at risk than others, given their debt levels in the current distressed environment? And moving forward, what should public REITs expect as they seek access to different sources of capital? Well, the good news here, Matt, is that uh, most equity REITs are uh, in decent shape uh, regarding leverage. It's true compared to how they were positioned um, back in 07 during the last recession. 
It's also true compared to how they were, uh, how they are positioned compared to most private real estate investment vehicles and companies who still use a pretty high amount of leverage. Uh, now, a handful of REITs do use a very aggressive balance sheet and they may get into, into some trouble. Um, and there is going to be some more scrutiny to lend money in some sectors like lodging and retail. But overall, we see leverage as a non-issue in REIT world uh, during, this, during this pandemic. Um, and really, this is thanks to REIT executives over the last few years asking themselves, how much debt should I reasonably have compared to many in the private sector uh, asking themselves, how much debt can I possibly get? Now, good deals can be made during economic expansions, but great deals can be made during um, periods of disruptions like the one we live right now. And being able to play offense in times like this, it can reap huge benefits over the long term. And so compared to most uh, private companies, we believe REITs are very well positioned right now to capitalize on these opportunities and potentially create uh, outsized investment returns. Pierre, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Matt, for having me. For more from REIT Week 2020, be sure to visit REIT.com.